So what I do, you guys, is I just will take a piece of paper and figure where, where things are going to go. So I'm going to have some wings here. And that's going to be done with a stencil, so don't, don't fret about that. And then I need to see like how big my heart's going to be. And I'm going to play and make sure I have a shape that I love. These sides do not have to match because I'm going to show you a little secret. And you may already know this. Okay, so I find the one that I like, the shape that I like. I'm going to do it probably in a different, let's see. Which one do I like? I like this line right here. I don't like my heart to be too pokey on the bottom. Okay, that's good enough for me. So that's kind of the middle. And so then what I do is I take it and I just fold it in half. I just need that one good side. Isn't that simple? Be sure to do that line down the middle though, because I've messed them up by not folding them, not folding them right. And then I'm gonna cut this out. And I'm going to see if I like that. And do I have room for my wings? So I'm going to grab my stencils. I have, this was one whole stencil, but I cut it apart because I, I just wanted to, um, not like put a whole stencil down on a page. I wanted to just put one little stencil down. Now, do I want it to go off the page? Oh, I can I can do it under the heart or I can do it on top of the heart if I like. I think on top of the heart is going to be a problem with this project. And then there's these guys. Like, oh, I think I'm liking that. What do you guys think? Oh, it would go this way. I'm liking that a lot. So yeah, there's plenty of room. In fact, my heart could be bigger. <laughs> um, nope, I'm going to leave it like that. So this heart's great. This heart works for this project. And these are the wings that I'm going to put on later. Alrighty, so here's my heart. And here's my ultra thick cardboard. Now I have to decide, because I'm going to strip some of the cardboard and expose the, the, the innards. I have to decide, do I want the lines crooked like this? See the cardboard lines? Do I want them crooked or do I want them straight? And if you know me, you probably know I like to do things a little off. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just using a pencil. You can use a pen, whatever. Now I will hang on to this heart because I'm actually teaching this class in my studio next week and this is a good heart. Sometimes I get a student who just can't cut out a heart that they like it. They'll say, can I use yours? And I'll say yes. So on here, I'm gonna say that this is a template. And I'm gonna do it on both sides. Oh, you can see through, that's good. So that I don't use that in something. And then I'm gonna cut this out. So let's try cutting the first layer with an X-Acto knife. Um, this cardboard, I have never seen anything like this. It's super thick and I really like it, but you don't have to have cardboard this thick. And of course, you're not going to do this right on your table. You could do it, oops, I put my stencil right in my glue. You could uh, do it on a stack of, um, <laughs> a stack of deli papers. Oh my gosh, I need to buy stock in that, in that company. Okay, and then I think I can come in with scissors and it's not going to kill me. Let's 
Look, how, look how thick that is. It's really thick. Honestly, if I had a, a wood saw, I would be sawing this right now. The reason I'm not cutting through with this is I don't, I don't have something to cut this on. Like, a, oh, I could use my gel plate cutting board. Hey, I'm gonna try that. Let's experiment and see if that works. It's not the same as cutting on, you know, uh, like a quilting cutting mat, which you may, you may have one of those. So let's just do it on here and see what happens. And obviously you can see that it doesn't have to be a pretty edge. It's funny, this project is dainty, but kind of, you know, scruffy. Dainty and scruffy, I, I don't know how else to say it. Oh yay, I got it. And all of this stuff, you can choose to leave this, it's kind of cool. Move that out of the way. All right, so here's how I do this. I like to come in. I have a, a tool that I um, use when I do pottery, and in pottery you can't, there can't be air bubbles in your pot, and so I actually pop these with um, uh, air bubbles with this tool. It's a pin. It's called a pin tool, but really you can use something else too. But it can't just be a skewer or something unless it's a metal, because this is pretty tough. So what I do is I come in and I start to pull off some of this. And this is a trick to know when to stop. When do you stop? Because I like, you know, one of my design elements in my pieces is I like hard edges and soft edges. I like contrast, I like dark and light. I like hot colors and cool colors, which we will, most, this, this project's a lot of cool colors, but we'll put some hot, we're gonna do some hot too. So you're getting the idea. Now, it's so funny because here you have the scruffy cardboard, which is a piece of trash, and um, basically, and um, you could put gems in here. You could put, I just bought some new product that dries clear, and it's specifically for beads and gems, and so I may lay some gems in here. So you have this rough, here's a, again a contrast. You have this rough kind of throwaway thing with something that has value and is shiny. And um, it's the Prince and the Pauper, you know, it's the, um, it's that contrast that we love. We love it in story, but we also love it in music. We love it in song, you know, songs go, they're loud and they're soft. Some places they're slow. Um, and we just artistically, the human um, heart and the human mind and the human eye love, we love contrast. So that is your art lesson for the day. Anyway, so there's that, and I'm gonna put that aside. And then we're going to go ahead and um, I'll be doing the edges on this later, but right now I'm gonna figure out where my wings need to go. So this is all gonna get glued down later. The reason I'm not doing it now is I'm gonna flip this over and glue that stuff down, and I'm not gonna do that at this very moment because it's wet. So here is where my heart is going to go. I like it to go a little more towards the top because we're going to have a key hanging off of here and I have to decide where my wings are going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and this is still glue, gluey, but I'm going to go ahead and decide where I want those wings to go and I'm going to lay them on there. 
not like that makes any difference on these guys. Now, let me tell you, if you're doing um, the same wing on each side, this one happens to have two wings that match, but if you're doing the same wing on each side, each side you're gonna, you're gonna do the treatment here, and I'll show you how to do the treatment in a minute, and then you're gonna dry it off, and then you're gonna do it over here. But uh, we're gonna be using, I'll show you right now, a joint compound. And um, that's what we're using, plus a um, spatula or some kind of tool. These cost about a buck to put this on. This was very inexpensive. I actually got it like at Walmart, but you can go and get that and your glue at the same time and get it at your hardware store. That'll work fine. Anyway, there's that, and that's what we're going to be putting on. So I'm going to put that like right here. Uh, let's see if I can get it on camera. Yeah. So um, again, if, uh, if you're treating this side and putting a wing there, you're gonna need to wash off that joint compound and flip it over and do it on the other side. So I'm content with these wings being right here. And so I'm gonna remove this. Now, you know, some of you are really particular, you want them to balance perfectly and stuff. I just kinda, I'm really okay with them not balancing. Now this is wet under here, and you should let this dry first, but since I'm videotaping, I'm not going to. So here's that joint compound, and this is, this is the consistency. This is what it is, kinda like toothpaste maybe. And so I'm gonna get some on the bottom here, and I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna do that. Whoa, I probably don't need that much. And you can tape it if you want to, if you, if you feel like you need to tape your stencil, you know, do that if that makes you comfortable. Uh, I don't want, I surely don't want it to move. I can tell you that I've had it move before and had to, you know, you have a few seconds a window to scrape it off if you mess up and just scrape it off and throw, you know, throw that out and start over again. So there's that. I have to think, how high do I want those wings? I think I'm going to add some more and just get a little, a little more um, height on those. There's a little mound. I have a little mound right here. I'm gonna do that over here. Now this is gonna take a while to dry and I live in a really dry climate and this takes a couple hours and sometimes when I do a workshop, oops, we don't get done if my students do this really thickly. So what I do when I do a workshop is I actually do this on a piece of cardboard when they first come in the door and then they glue on the cardboard and they can take it home um, kind of wet. Okay, I'm feeling good about that so I'm gonna lift this like so. And I have these really cool wings. I don't know if you can see those. I'm gonna fold this and I'm putting it in my water. Usually I'd walk over to my sink, but since I have you here, I don't wanna leave you, that would be rude. This is going in my water as well. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna dry. This is gonna dry. I'm gonna sand this so I don't have these peaks. You can leave them. Um, I, I want a little bit of a softer look today with this because I'm doing soft colors. If I was doing really a bright, um, kind of, you know, just on the brighter side project, I would um, leave those peaks there and, and let it just be kind of like ruffled feathers. Whew. But I just want a softer look, softer colors, softer project. So we're gonna let that dry and um, and we'll get back to staining that and stuff in a minute. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and work on this. I need another piece of deli paper. I'll grab one back here. And I'm gonna paint this guy. Now I for, sh I for sure want cardboard to show the color of cardboard, but I think I would like to um, remember when we did our, our, our deli, when we did our gel plating, we used kind of a cream color. I think I'm going to pick that up over here. It was kind of this peachy color, and this color is falling out of my hand. Um, well, oh, it's called light flesh. Hmm, that would be me. And um, I'm going to use this light flesh color here. 
and I'm going to pick up maybe some of the bronzy colors we used. And so I like to use a family of colors when I do my pieces. I like to stick, usually I stick with three colors. So the three, it, I mean, in almost everything I do. It doesn't mean I don't use any other color. But here, let's look at this, three colors. So I've got blues and greens and kind of a, 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 a brown, like a light brown. And the light brown is gonna be here and here. It's th This uh, also um, is that color. And so those are the three colors. Black and white are not colors, so I, don't, I always use them. We'll be inking later on this. But I usually, um, do three colors that are on the color wheel and black and white aren't on the color wheel. And that's how I have success. Everything works together um, on these projects. So let's do this and I'm going to pick up a nice brush and I'm going to begin to go with the grain actually. <laughs> and I'm going to bring some of the bronze in here too. And the bronze turned brown with this cream, so I'm not going to add the bronze till after the cream dries. It just turned brown, so live and learn, right? I really want that cardboard to show, and it's for sure going to show on the sides. That's nice. And then actually, while I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put my my brush in the water in the water party over here. I think while this is here, I'm going to actually, um, while it's wet, I'm actually going to pick up a piece of deli paper over here in my pile. And I'm going to find a piece I really like. Oh, that's kind of a cool piece. I'm going to actually, um, I want a few pieces in here just because I don't think those are the pieces I want. Though. Ah, well, I know what I want. Got my Mod Podge, homemade Mod Podge, right there. I see a dog hair in there too. I won't charge extra for that though. That'll just be for free. I kind of do like this green. I'm going to put some on there and then I'm going to put another piece on top of it. That has a really hard edge. I think that's, oh, let me think about that. Yeah, I might use that and put it in the gr with the grain. See, I put a piece of green under there and put that one, oh, there's another piece of hair. My cat, I think it's cat hair, he's been visiting my table when I'm gone. He likes to come here. He likes my paint brushes. I bet you guys who have cats can understand. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Again, remember we're trying to just create layers. I try not to think about it too much. Does it make sense? No, I'm trying to create layers. Don't think about it too much. Don't, I'm telling myself, I'm not telling you. Lori, don't think about it too much, it's okay. I like that green on there. So I'm gonna, it helps to put glue down first, right? Put some of that on there, and that's a Jelly Deli. <laughs> I like that. Uh, jelly Deli, okay. Alrighty. I have some good paint going on here, so I'm just gonna And I'm going to let that dry somewhere else. Kind of cool, isn't it? I'm going to let this dry. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy. He's drying. I'm going to grab a tray because I don't want to put him on deli paper. Can you imagine? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll put him on my cutting board. I'll flip it over and I'm gonna do the sides.